trod force test for a T-Rex 600. All right now we're looking at the setup where we have the tail blades and half the tail case set up on a three horsepower variable speed router where we can power the blades up to the uh, around 10,500 RPM of the tail rotor. We have a um, digital angle gauge which we're using to calibrate the scale of the force gauge so we know where we are within the pitch range so we can correlate the push rod forces with a particular pitch angle and this is the digital force gauge that we're using which reads in um, half ounce resolution and this is the general setup that we're going to be using and going through first with the Batman blades with standard bolts and then K&B Dream Design blades with standard bolt K&B Dream Design blades have approximately the same weight and uh, layout as carbon fiber blades so you can just correlate that what you see on the KB blades will be uh, extremely close if you're using carbon fiber blades. Here's the baseline drag force with nothing going on. So we can see what the linkage drags and pivots and all that are. We're looking at roughly an ounce, ounce and a half. If we get towards the ends it gets up to two. Go the other direction. We'll see that roughly we have a baseline of one ounce. Towards the ends it gets a little higher. One ounce, ounce and a half. Okay, now we're actually going to run the test. It's going to be noisy, so you're not going to hear anything, but just keep your eye on the pitch readings and the forces. Here you can see the tip of a KB Dream Design blade just showing you that we're actually running this in the um, with the force gauge set up on the router and now we'll zoom in just on the readings. This is the test with the KB Dream Design blades, but with the uh, special Chinese nut that's just been uh, custom uh, adjusted to balance the uh, tennis racket forces for this setup. Uh, in this particular case, because the nut or the original bolt is so long in the blade grip, it takes very little weight to balance out that force to get uh, the lower pushrod forces. Uh, so when you see my fingers lift off of the uh, force gauge I'm totally letting go of it so that you can see that it actually sits at the 10 and 20 degree positions both directions without being held there uh, and needs to be either be pushed or pulled off of that location so we're going to fire it up As you can see there, it would stay by itself at just below 20 either directions. It, and once we got past that, there started to climb some forces in there. I believe those are actual aerodynamic forces 
that are occurring on the blades themselves and are independent of the actual Chinese uh, weight forces that are there. So basically we've reduced those forces uh, as close to zero as possible. This is the Chinese nut in the stock blade grip. As you can see the hex fits in and keeps you from needing to use a wrench. And the nut can only go on one way because it is not tapped all the way through. So you can't put the nut on backwards. Bolt and the custom nut to the left of that and the standard nylock to the left of that. Uh, there's not a whole lot of mass difference between the standard nylock and the custom but the uh, custom has the weight moved further out and um, that's one of the reasons why in this case we don't actually need a full custom bolt and nut is because the bolt is so long on this plastic blade grip that it adds quite a bit of the canceling um, forces to the pitch arm just because of the length of the bolt so that's why we only actually need a nut in this particular case as opposed to some of the ones you've seen uh, that I've made for Kasama 500 or uh, where it doesn't it actually needs a longer head on both sides but the fact that the weight is only on the back side and not evenly distributed on both sides in actuality that weight actually helps to um, push against the forces uh, on the blades themselves because the blades are actually being pushed uh, predominantly um, towards the boom um, because that's the direction that they have to constantly counter the uh, rotor uh, torque so that nut on one side actually is is probably a benefit and actually reduces the moment loads on the bearings in the blade grip this is a test with uh, no blades and no blade bolts just to see the tennis racket effect of the pitch arm and the uh, link arms, the, the centrifugal forces on those, and how much they uh, contribute to the, uh, the initial tennis racket effect. Tennis racket forces of bare blade grips at speed. As you can see there, there was uh, definitely a centering force. I had to push it to the one direction and pull it to the other direction. It wanted to stay centered. When we put the blade bolts in next with no blades, I think we'll see that the blade bolts by themselves uh, overcompensate. And if you look closely on the force gauge, you'll see a T and a C. That shows whether it's in tension or compression. And you'll see that the blade uh, grips with just the bolts want to suck out and pop on either side of zero. They uh, want to do the opposite of, of the normal tennis racket effect. They're going to flop either direction. This is with the standard blade bolt and the Chinese nut and you're going to see that this is going to want to severely pull either direction off of zero. Uh, the readings you see are going to be opposite of the other ones. Those forces are actually going to be trying to go in the direction I'm going. As you can see there, it's tension, and normally it would be compression going back. That's compression that's pushing, trying to get to 40. And as you can see, as I move to the 30 degree, it really wants to go, and it's actually locked itself in place there. The pitch arms going over center and uh, won't let me come back. So this proves out that there is um, also significant tennis racket effects in the mass of the blades themselves.